Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I am here today um, with day 11 of the 12 days of Christmas uh, hop hosted by Rosa Kelly, who is Rosa Kelly Scrapbooking. I'm joined by Debbie, who is Deborah Adams Creative Life, and Kimmy, who is Salty Beach Scrapper. So this is a prize hop and so I hope you guys have been watching all of our days um, all 12 days you're gonna have to watch today's 11 days so you have to watch tomorrow as well make a comment on the videos um, and don't be afraid to tell us what you like and what you dislike um, be nice obviously but um, you know so, some people have some great ideas um, and they're like oh if you change this it would do that and so it's just awesome for the feedback I'm, I'm really enjoying it I'm loving seeing people getting new ideas or remembering old techniques that you know are bringing back so definitely comment we do read the comments and because this is a prize hop and it's random winners you could be a winner four times right because it's, we're just randomly picking names from a random video so how I'm gonna pick my prize is I'm gonna put all 12 videos um, in the random generator and then whatever video it, whatever number it tells me that's the prize you're gonna get so you're gonna get whatever I made on that video plus a gift card plus whatever else I throw in the package <clears throat> if you're United States now if you are international for my prize you're going to get the equivalent of a $25 United States dollar uh, credit to your PayPal so whatever it is in your currency that's what you'll get because um, I mean that'll be cheaper than shipping so don't forget to comment on all the videos all 12 videos for all four people I know it sounds a lot but um, the most of the videos are pretty short the tutorials may be a little longer but the actual videos are short so don't forget that it's a prize okay and I'm not gonna lie I keep forgetting to tell you guys that on all my videos so <laughs> my bad anyway so here is today's project I'm super excited um, before I open it, I know you guys are just like, open it! Before I open it, um, I had a time <laughs> with this project because, um, I had a vision in my head and I just could not execute anything until I made this box. And I'm so happy for the process I went through because I don't think I would have came up with this box if I didn't do the process. Um, when you see the tutorial I show you all of the craziness I went through to just kind of get this box so here's the outside did some color blocking um, I thought it was really cute <laughs> just kidding I cut my paper too short so I had to cover it up <laughs> so I like pointing out my mistakes to you because especially if you're a beginner the hardest lesson to learn is to be easy on yourself okay once you learn to be easy on yourself when you're crafting you're going to be able to color block and you know do all of that so it looks like it's an on purpose but what ha happened was i cut my paper too short and i didn't have any other paper in this collection that was this big so my option was to go ahead and put this little not even a quarter of an inch this is like slightly bigger than an eighth of an inch to put this down here or I could have cut my paper in half and did two different papers and whatnot that was just too much work so I did this and then to kind of coordinate it I put a little sliver of a banner the rest of this sliver underneath here so be easy on yourself okay you can cover it up it looks gorgeous it looks on purpose I mean technically it was on purpose but it's because I was covering an accident right same thing with here okay I had to cover my sides why because I jacked up my finger pool I don't know what I was doing I wasn't paying attention I messed it up so guess what I did I covered it with the green paper and I fixed it nobody knows okay so here we go Ta -da! it's a little boozy box a little boozy hot chocolate isn't this fun so okay I have two different hot chocolates I got the Starbucks double chocolate because yes and then I saw these I got these um, on base but you can get them at Walmart I saw them at Walmart um, it's the hot chocolate melt and so you put them in the hot chocolate and 
they they melt into. I mean, you put it in hot milk and then it melts into hot chocolate, according to the directions, right? And then I put a little Bailey's in there because you know around the holidays, for those of you who drink, you may need a little, you may need to get a little boozy. I don't know. And then there's a little candy snack, some Hershey's nuggets. So this box is so cute, such a great gift. Um, if you're selling at a craft fair, I would just have one as a sample and obviously have an empty bottle. Don't don't sell alcohol because you don't have a license to sell it. Okay, don't get in trouble. Um, or you can just fill it with other candies. Like these are the little bougie candies you get from um, Home Goods. So you can fill it with these guys instead and it still looks beautiful so you have these little there's these come in all different flavors there's like cheesecake raspberry pistachio there's a bunch of them um, so you can put those in there and still have your Hershey nuggets and you have your your two hot chocolates or you can go to Dollar Tree and get some cookies comes three in a pack you could do a little hot chocolate and a little cookie, right? I don't think all three will fit. Okay, all three fits. So if you want to do that, you can do that as well. Um, or if you don't want to pay for the expensive Starbucks one, um, just get the regular Swiss Miss. Or just do your Melt Away and your Mrs. Fields. What a great gift this is, right? You could do all candy, or you can do your little booze box. I made this for my mom because she said she wanted some um, some Baileys. So, well, okay, so I didn't really make the whole box for her. I just got the Baileys for her because she doesn't like chocolate at all, but except for these bougie candies. It's the only chocolate she'll eat. So anyway, so that's the box. You can add your candy cane, you know, whatever you want. If you want to just, instead of the Baileys, put a whole bunch of candy canes there, that'd be great too. Or, 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 there's more. You can take your divider out and just fill this up with Hershey Nuggets. I have the whole bag here. Yes, I'm making sure the words are all the correct way. So you have so many options with this box. I just want to see how many will fit in here. And probably that's it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten will fit in there. So you have so many options with this box. Um, you know, the dividers look really cute, but they're not glued down. So you can divide this however you want. Got it? Um, same thing with this divider. It's not glued down either. So, you know, you can change the whatever you want. All right, here's the tutorial, guys. Okay, so <laughs> here's the tutorial. This is like the 15th time over two hours that I started this video because as you can see, I was not happy with anything that I was producing and I had all these cute ideas and they just didn't work. So I had this idea with the mittens that I printed from free uh, printables from Google. This is mittens. And the idea was cute. Okay, it was. It just, you know, it just wasn't hidden. It, I don't know. It wasn't doing enough. So you put it in here like this, and it's super cute. Um, and you could just tie it up with some cellophane and a ribbon. I think for me, I didn't have cellophane oh, and I don't have matching ribbon and it was too much. Maybe if I would have used like the dark blue paper, I wouldn't have seen so much white and then it would have been okay. So that was my first idea. <clears throat> and then I wanted to have the Hershey Kisses, gosh, Hershey Nuggets. And so I made a little box that <sighs> I got mad at myself and I... I got frustrated, not mad at myself, I got frustrated, so I crumpled it up. So this little box was cute, it fit the little nuggies, like so, and then I printed off little baby mittens, oopsies, 
little baby mittens and that was cute too but again I didn't have cellophane or whatnot so I was like okay fine let's do a fold flat box because how cute is that um and my focus kind of started going to the nuggies and then I remembered no today's theme is hot chocolate so um did a cute little box and I was like you can still put the mitten you know it's really cute but you can't do the second mitten because how are you going to open up the top if you have two mittens in a way that's annoying and then I was like okay well you can you know do it sideways like this and then open the box sideways so that worked um, I just again this wasn't wasn't the idea that I wanted to give y'all like um, it's cute it's cute at best I like it but I didn't love it so that's when I came up with this glory that I absolutely love and um, it took out some um, some cuss words um, I probably should have walked away a couple times because you know like sometimes when you're just like overwhelmed and it's just not doing what it's supposed to do my paper was doesn't <laughs> it wasn't doing um, I probably should have walked away but when I finally got it I'm absolutely in love with this set and I think it is brilliant and I'm so happy with the outcome so all of the drama that I went through look at this I made a different box I made this that yes I'm using scraps this one <laughs> this one these <laughs> I was going through oh wait here's another one I was going through idea after idea after idea and nothing was that light bulb moment until this box Ta -da! and I absolutely love it look I even started and messed it all up and everything um, so I have another wow <laughs> idea for you guys um, I don't know how I did the other 10 days because I was super sick and today was the first day that I'm not sick and then I couldn't get anything to work go figure all right let's make this box before I change my mind I'm gonna use a 110 pound weight cardstock because this here is just some flimsy cardstock that I don't care about that goes nicely in the recycle bin you're gonna need two pieces that are ouch, eight and seven eighths by eight okay yes they're both going to be the exact same measurement because I'm gonna make it a hinged box it's not your traditional lid you're gluing it to make it a hinge so yes it's gonna be the same size oh look another box that I made for the the melt aways okay we're gonna use this we're gonna use this on the next project okay so eight by eight and seven eighths for both pieces all right so eight by eight and seven eighths I'm super excited for this okay on both pieces so eight by eight and seven eighths Um, I th yeah, keep this piece because you're gonna you're gonna use that piece one of them anyway. Um, okay, now we need to score all four sides at one and a half. It's 110 pound cardstock, so make sure you really get that score line in there, or your paper's gonna crack. If you guys have been following me for the last 10, 11 days, or I don't even know what day it is. Um, you would have saw when I did my notebook on the 100 pound pen weight black cardstock, it cracked. Well, of course I went down a rabbit hole 
to see why that happened. And the reason that happened is because I didn't put my score lines deep enough. So make sure you, you really put some muscle into your score lines so your paper doesn't crack. All right, so both of them again scored at one and a half on all four sides. Okay, so one and a half and one and a half and one and a half. Okay, let's move our scoreboard. Now, it, pick one piece and put the long side at the top. If you follow what I'm about to say, yours will come out exactly like mine, okay? So put the long side at the top, and we're going to go ahead. Oh, my gosh. Okay, anyway. <sighs> Frustration. <laughs> All right. We're going to, um, long side is at the top. We're going to go ahead and cut up the score line. Cut off eh, probably half. Miter. Miter. Okay. Cut up the score line. Cut off half. Miter. Miter. Rotate it. You got to do the same on the bottom. Cut up the score line. Half. Miter. And miter, cut up the score line, half, and miter, and miter. Okay. Okay. There was too many conversations going on in the background, so hopefully they were not picked up on camera. All right, so go ahead and varnish your lines. Okay. All right, so we're going to go ahead and fold up our tabs. We're going to glue them. You can do one tab at a time, two tabs at a time, three, four tabs, whatever you want. Right now I'm just doing two. Alright, so we're going to glue, and we're going to glue, or line up our edges perfectly, make sure you're lined up, and do your other ones. They're perfect. And the last one. Okay. Where is my glue towel? Great. I have no idea where it is. Oh, excuse my arm. Okay. And yes, I know my camera keeps doing whatever my camera wants to do. Okay. Sorry. All right. So now we have this. Now, if you take your lid, and now you're going to put your short side at the top. And the reason why I do this a very specific way is because I want the tabs to be on all four sides. If you do it the way that I'm telling you, then you're going to have tabs on left and right and tabs on the front. Instead of having tabs on tabs, um, that sounds petty, uh, but for me, in my brain, it makes more sense to have the tabs on the opposite sides just so it reinforces. I don't know if that's a real thing or if it really helps anything, but in my brain it does. So that's why I do 
anytime I do a lid it box, I do opposite tabs. If I remember, if I don't, then whatever tabs are going to go wherever they go. So short side at the top, start at the bottom. I'm going to cut up the score line, cut off half miter and miter. Okay. Cut up the score line, cut off half miter and miter. Okay. This next part, listen carefully. Okay. If you do the exact same thing to this side, then you're going to have a traditional lid and bottom box. What I'm about to tell you is how to make it so that way it is a hinged box. So it opens like that and it's still connected. Okay. If you were eager beaver overachiever and already cut the other side, that's fine because all you need to do is cut off your squares. The entire square needs to be cut off. So we were at this step and normally you'll rotate it and do the same thing on this side. Okay, you would cut, cut it in half, miter, miter. But because we don't need these two tabs, we're going to completely cut them off as neat as you can okay so if you've already cut up and did all that just can just cut them tabs off it's fine okay but it needs to be on the short side so that way your box presentation is this way okay if you didn't cut it on the short side and you cut it on the long side, then your box is going to open horizontally. So it will look like this. It's going to, instead of opening from top to bottom, it's going to open from like this okay and all of your items will be sideways for me I wouldn't care honestly um, if you're giving this to a non crafter they're not going to care so don't redo it but if you feel if you if you accidentally did it the wrong way and you really want to redo it just redo your lid because your bottom doesn't matter there's no orientation for the bottom box okay only for the top box all right, so if you did it the correct way, the short side, then um, go ahead and glue your tabs. Now, when I do hinge boxes, um, I change the method of how I do them. So if you watched me previously, you're going to be like, Tiff, that is not what you said before. I evolve. I can change some stuff. Okay. So now you have this funky little thing where you just have one edge and then you have your flappy bit, okay? So now we're going to take our flappy bit and we are going to add glue. And now we're going to add it to the back of the box. So what I do is very carefully close the box. Make sure it's all lined up evenly and what are you doing here? Why are you not working? Here we go. And close the box, okay? Glue that tab on there. Lift the 110 pound weight. I didn't varnish the top. That's why it's acting up. Okay, make sure you varnish your box. I don't think I did. That's why my lines aren't crisp. Ew. Okay, make sure you varnish your box. That's why I have a lot of flare out. Oh, I'm sad. I did not. I don't think I varnished this box. 
It's okay. If you don't varnish, obviously it still works, but you're going to have a lot of flare out. And so I just tried to varnish as best as I could because I don't want, um, oh, let me make sure this is stuck down. And what I mean by flare out is this. Because I didn't varnish, look at the flare out. It's okay. It's just a little annoying. So when you varnish, look at the difference between the flare out. Look at that. Well, now I just messed that one up, but it's less. Okay. Here we go. Yeah, I'm really mad at myself for not varnishing. I don't think I did. All right, so this is what it is. There we go. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is take my little um, circle punch and I'm gonna make a finger pull. Here it is. This is the top of the box and I'm just gonna go about halfway in the middle. Okay, so this is what I was talking about with tabs on tabs. So see how there's tabs on that side, tabs on this side, and now these tabs are on top. So now there's tabs here. You know what I mean? Like, that's just what I like. Again, it may just be something crazy in my brain, but it makes sense to me. What's not making sense is why is my box shorter? I didn't do something right. I don't know, I don't know what I did. Oh, I didn't line it up properly. That's okay. It's fine. All right, so now let's go ahead and do our dividers because the dividers look gorgeous in this box, right? Before I give this away, I am going to redo this lid because I did a bad job. <laughs> I, I don't know what I, I don't know what I did. But I'll redo it off camera. Okay, so let's go ahead and do our, what you call them, our dividers. So our dividers are, um, five and a half by seven. Let me move this over. Let me find another piece of cardstock. So five and a half by seven. Five and a half by seven. And I would do these hinges out of whatever scraps you have, whatever color matches your color palette. You can change the, the colors. Um, that way you're, you're not wasting a whole bunch of paper. But if you're only doing like one or two, then it doesn't really matter. Okay, and on the seven inch side, you're gonna score at three and a half. Four and a half and five and a half. Okay. And how you're going to fold your paper is valley, mountain, valley. So the middle one needs to come up and the other two need to go like this. So you have this, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and put that in our box. It should fit perfectly. It's not gonna go all the way down to the bottom. If you want it to go all the way down to the bottom, you, you can measure that out. Okay. Like this. So now we need to get our little, pretend I didn't tear that off. We need to get our three little nuggies in there. And that measurement is, one and three eighths by five and a quarter. So one and three eighths, which one and three eighths is the tick mark 
between the quarter and the half. So one and three eighths by five and a quarter. And that needs to be scored on the long side at one and a half, two and a half, and three and a half. And again, it's gonna be folded valley, mountain, valley. And if you wanna see that, then it's valley, mountain, and then valley, okay? And that just goes in here like so. And we're just gonna push this back up and we're gonna put our nuggies back in. Ta-da! Okay, so you can glue your hinges if you want. Um, I'm, I'm not. You can decorate over your hinges if you want to. I probably won't. But I absolutely love this gift pack and this is exactly the project I wanted to do and I'm so proud of it. Before I decorate it, I am gonna redo my lid because I don't know what I did. Look at this. I don't know what I did. I didn't line it up properly. Look at how nice and snug this one is. So um, yeah. All right guys, thanks for watching tutorial. Bye.